What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta. In the last episode, I think we were just finishing up the graveyard section of the prologue, and now we're going to get a cutscene and learn a little bit more about the setting and a few more mechanics of the game. Oh, what a day! I'm screwed! Ah! It's going to take every cent I earned on this charade to pay for the damage! I tell you what, if I could see them bastards that did this to my car, Forget about it. Enzo, the road. Pay attention to me. How can you be so calm? You're still getting screwed in all this, too. Of all the low-life scum in too deep in this town, I've never seen one get wrapped up in a fight with God's messengers. Dressed like a nun, too. When you end up in the afterlife, that's not going to be pretty. I can't help it if I like the little outfits. The toys are nice. <laughs> 20 years ago, you woke up stuck in a casket at the bottom of a lake. All you can remember is that you're a witch. But now, you're stuck because you gotta sacrifice our halo-wearing friends every day or they'll drag your ass back down to hell. I know, I thought I got screwed, but being forced to slap around the Divine for a living? That's really getting screwed. If I needed a biographer, you wouldn't be my first choice. I see to the funeral, you get me the information I asked for. That was our deal. Ha 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 ha, come on now! Look at my poor car! I'm working for free after this! At least let me get a drink at Rodan's before you start drilling me. The info I got is good. It's gonna get you close to finding the other stone in the pair and figuring out some of that lost past of yours. I swear. <laughs> After jewels instead of cash. Just like a girl. <laughs> Jesus! Can't you take a joke? Enzo, someone's given you a present. Hey. Too bad. I can't stand bugs. All right, I think that's the end of the dialogue in this. <sighs> I might be wrong, Emma. Okay, so when you see uh, Enzo's steering wheel pop off back there, that's uh, an ad lib from the motion capture actor. <gasps> which they decided to what leave in, and that's fuck? not the end of the dialogue. But it's just Enzo going with the buck. And it's weird, because you don't typically think of motion cappers as having uh, the freedom to ad-lib, like a uh, voice actor or just like a regular actor, I guess? Might. Uh, anyway, a couple corrections from the last episode. Uh, the highest rank you can get is not platinum. The highest rank is pure platinum. I forgot about that, and... Uh, I also went into the the different planes of existence, the Paradiso, Inferno, Purgatorio thing. And I think I attributed Purgatorio to the human world when that's not actually the case. And Rodan will get more into that later, but uh, Purgatorio is more like an in-between place where uh, magical beings can exist. And now we're being reintroduced to the modern-day Jean. And she's pretty much Bayonetta's foil. She's going to play that role for the most of the rest of the game. She is uh, Virgil to Bayonetta's Dante. You? What's the matter, Bayonetta? All that sleeping made you soft. <laughs> And so here we're going to get a little slow motion section, some cool choreography, a little bit of a action. But we're going to get the tutorial for the torture uh, the torture attacks. And as you can see it took 8 of my 8 of the the bubbles from my magic gauge to do one of those and it's just a quick instant kill for the, on most enemies. It does I think huh. On some of the bigger enemies, I think it just does a ton of damage. No, it does kill uh, the bigger enemies, but obviously not uh, bosses. I was thinking of a uh, different kind of attack. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just going to be like an instant kill, and you can mash to get uh, bonus halos during it. 
And the way you earn the uh, the magic gauge bubbles is to just do activate witch time um, to perform combos. And I think there's one or two other ways. Uh, there's a special item you can get, which allows you to, to generate parts of your magic gauge. Oh, I was reading more about uh, Bayonetta's character design, and there's some really weird stuff that went into it. Uh, Mari Shimazaki, who designed the character, made a blog post on the Platinum Games site uh, back before the game was released, and he was going into detail about how the character design was conceived and fleshed out, and one of the things he pointed out was that they really wanted her to stand out from the other female action game protagonists, and so instead of, of short, thin legs, she has these crazy, straw-thin, long legs that are just not in any way reminiscent of anything human. And then, of course, you have the glasses, and those were because Kamiya wanted uh, Bayonetta to have a sense of mystery and intelligence to her. And the weirdest thing of all, the hair they go into detail about, and the reason why she has to be naked for some of these crazier attacks is just the most ridiculously rationalized thing. It pretty much, their justification for that is, uh, she doesn't have time not to be naked during battle. She doesn't have time to control the way her hair moves during these big, flashy demon attacks. And... Shimazaki also goes into how, like, that's his favorite part of the character, and it's just really weird. Ed and Edna. Not sure what that's a reference to. Oh, I also looked more into the uh, the Sarah Palin comments, and apparently it was a big thing that a lot of people were comparing uh, the two. And Kamiya was interviewed about it, about uh, how the joke had, was still going on. He was surprised about that, and it was so old and stale at the time, even like years ago. And. I agree with his thoughts. He thinks the only thing they have in common is that they both Those have glasses. Sure know how to get attention. Even perk the ears of the hotheads down home. You don't say. It's getting harder and harder to tell the worlds apart. Human world. Inferno. Paradiso, who can tell the difference? Even harder with Purgatorio in the middle. Fight long enough in there and you'll really lose sight. Why the sudden interest in metaphysics? It's a balance, right? Even if some of them like messing around with the humans, we've all got a stake in the status quo. But people keep fucking around like this, the Book of Revelations is gonna look like Mother Goose. Heaven and Hell are gonna go straight for each other's throats. Heaven and Hell can tear each other to pieces for all I care. I've got my own problems to worry about. Something's up. Everything was a bit too bracing. And Enzo's tip makes the timing too perfect. This reeks of a setup. Someone in one of those lost memories calling you out. So Rodin's bottle analogy here always I reminds me of the, uh, oh, shit, dialogue. These babies are special. Built from an alloy the devil himself would kill to get his hands on. Don't break these, because they're one of a kind. Okay, so his bottle analogy always reminds me of uh, the scene from Lost where Jacob is explaining to uh, to Nestor Campbell's character, what was his name, uh, Richard, when he gives the bottle analogy to Richard about what the island is, and he uses the cork in the wine glass. Luckily, Bayonetta just embraces being stupid and crazy and full of magical nonsense from the beginning, so it's not 
calling like a letdown at the end when you find out it's not actually science fiction. Oh, lost. I'm getting a little tired of these weaklings they keep throwing at me. Maybe I should aim for something a bit more high class. I love how this scene is just trashy and classy at the same time, just like Gangnam style. Pounding them down tonight, baby. Not to butt into your affairs, but I'm pretty sure you got somewhere better to be. The guys you're up against aren't the type to wait for you to finish a round. So that's what that feels like. Enzo. Her drinks are going on your tab, buddy. <laughs> <sighs> you did beat motherfucker. Aw, oh, poor Enzo. Let's see, how did I do here? Uh, no item used. Oh, I took a lot of damage. Eh, gold. <laughs> Not super happy about that, but oh well. I think next we get introduced to uh, a recurring mini game. Nah, is that what's coming up? Yes, it is. Okay, so this is Angel Attack, and it's a sure uh, short little, little shooter arcade section. And you can see a little scorecard down here on the bottom left. Pretty much, if I hit the little uh, winged, or I guess they're all winged. The little, I don't, I don't even know what they're called. You see them there. They're worth three points, the regular angels are worth five, and then there's also bonuses for headshots and double kills. And I'm whipping a lot of shots. Fuck. Ah, it was okay. And I got a double kill. Let's see. Oh no, I went too early. I figured they were going to float more into the crosshair. Yeah, 46 points, that's not bad. And you can use these points here to just buy uh, items flat out. I don't have enough for any of the 50 pointers. And they're just big versions of the uh, the regular items. Then you could, I could get a magical flute right now and that's pretty useful. But I'm just going to exchange them for halos. I can get, you get uh, 100, 100 halos for every point. So I can get 4600 and... Oh, fun fact about the uh, the guns that you just get. They are called Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme, and that is a an incredibly weird video game reference. Not because it's referencing Simon and Garfunkel, but but because it's referencing uh, the the name of the guns, the set of guns, is Scarborough Fair, and that is referencing um, an English ballad that focuses on the, those four herbs. So, I asked around and some whale in Europe is trying to fence a huge rock on the black market. He calls it the right eye, saying it's part of some set called the eyes of the world. Fits the bill of what you're after, don't it? Now, here's the funny bit. The stone passes around the halls of power for hundreds of years, vanishes, and then the black market goes white hot for the thing. But the seller wanted an arm and a leg for it, to the point no one could stomach the price. So back goes the stone, but not before everyone figures out where the guy is. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy doing this one, I bet. I love sticking it to the rich. Of course, when you do, don't forget your old buddy Enzo stuck his neck out on this one. Slide me a few fuzzles out of the rich guy's pocket for my troubles, right? Anyways, you better get going before the trail gets cold. Off to the middle of nowhere. Paradise of Europe. Vigri. Oh, hey, it's the song from the intro to the Let's Play, Let's Dance Boys. 
Ooh, catchy little tune. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. So enjoy the fact that the plot is pretty much a simple chase this MacGuffin now while it lasts, because there's going to be some time travel, kind of, and multiple intersecting dimensions and dimensions that vanish and twists and a lot, of, and a lot more and Bayonet is amnesia later, and it's going to get a little complicated to follow. This is supposed to be paradise? It starts out like the beginning of a spider web. Nice, clean, easy to follow. A couple of threads, and then it just gradually branches out in every direction, and each thread comes to its logical conclusion and then goes way past that. And it just gets fly- uh, we're just fucking flies getting tangled up in this sticky, complicated mess. And it's- it, it gets pretty obtuse. And so the things you see I'm collecting here, um or that I just collected from the bench, rather. <clears throat> uh, they're pretty much just crafting yeah. materials, and you use them to craft things like lollipops and other items, and I'm not going to be doing yeah. much crafting. Uh, I will probably yeah. ma be making a few of an item called a yeah. magical flute, and what a magical yeah. flute does is it just kills everything nearby, or I think yeah. it heavily damages it, one or the other. And I'll probably be using them for the Alfheim yeah. challenges. But beyond that, not much crafting to be done, so I'm not going to focus on yeah. going around getting uh, crafting materials. And he, right here, I'm breaking all these benches because, one, I wanted the magical yeah. butterfly. <laughs> I love that sentence. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm breaking yeah. all these benches because once you break the last one, it's yeah. a trigger for the train to leave. And you need yeah. the train out of the way to get um, one of the items under it. Yeah. So what you have to do is double jump up here and break all the benches. Yeah. The train will depart and you'll be able to get it. And oh, another yeah. uh, crafting item. I think they come in th yeah. three colors. There's a red one, a green one, and a yellow one. Yeah. And I think the magical flute takes two of each. So now, I th was that the last bench? It should be. Maybe I missed... Oh, yeah, I did miss a few. Yeah. Okay, so what I didn't mention in um, the yeah. previous video is that I'm going to be kind of 99%ing this game, or not really. Um, I'm going to kind of 100% it as much as I can, which is to say um, there are a couple things that I'm not going to be doing. Like, for instance, there are 101 Umbran Tears of Blood, and 50 of them are tied to achievements, and then the other 51 come with finding crows hidden all over the world. And they're spread out over multiple difficulties, so I can't actually get them playing on normal, and I'm not gonna try 100%ing the game on non-stop infinite climax, uh, which is the unlockable hard mode with no witch time. And then also try to present myself and information about the game. That, uh, that's too much going on for me. Um, I'm also not going to be getting some of the hidden weapons because they're t they're also tied to the difficulty. And let's see. I probably won't get the uh, uh, weapon from the secret boss fight because you need to grind a crazy number of halos to get to that or to, to buy the item you need to initiate the boss fight. I'm not going to buy every special move, but I don't think most people would consider that part of 100 100 ah 100 percenting an action game. So what I am going to get is pretty much everything else. I'm going to do all the Alfheim challenges. I'm going to get all the broken moon pearls. Uh, all the witch hearts and all the golden LPs for all the uh, uh, obtainable weapons on normal. And I might also try to buy all the, the perfume slash fragrances that are unlocked when you trade a uh, golden LP for a weapon. And I'll tentatively say that I will get all the accessories, but 
again, it just depends on whether or not I feel like grinding for all this stuff. Yeah, it looks like I'm getting pretty close to being out of time here, so I'm going to cut the episode here, and we'll pick up in the next episode with uh, this journal. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be, t be sure to tune into the next one. Till then, though, take it easy. Have a good one.